What is going on everybody and welcome to the first video of my cybersecurity fundamental series. My name is Colin and today I'm going to be answering your question, what is a blue team? Now it's really important to be understanding uh, what is a blue team because it's one of the most fundamental cybersecurity operations. Uh, I'm sure you've heard red team and blue team. I'm going to be getting into them and be talking about them a lot more in the series. So it's really important that I just get this video uh, in there so you understand what I'm talking about later on in this series. So let's get right into it. So now I'm going to be telling you about what are blue teams and what do they do. So blue teams are defensive security teams that improve the organization's security posture. They identify intrusions, perform incident response, and conduct malware analysis during the incident response process. The blue team works on finding threats through security lapses and by analyzing logs, writing defensive signatures, and they conduct many more um, operations throughout the day. And I'm going to be getting into them now. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about the blue team's skill set, because it's really important to understand what skills are necessary to be a member of the blue team and to effectively improve your organization's security posture. Now, I put communication in all caps because it is very important. You can be the most skilled cybersecurity technician possible, but you have to be able to communicate your findings to management to actually be able to see this change happen to, secu to secure your organization. As a blue team member, you should be able to translate the language of security into the language of management. Supplement your technical skills with management classes and training so you can excel in this blue team implementation. Uh, you have to have a deep understanding of networks and operating systems, and in some advanced cases, you have to uh, work on reverse engineering and forensics during the process of incident response. And another important thing, I've mentioned this in my other videos before, is that you need to be constantly looking to learn. You need to be really, really interested in this field, always looking to learn, uh, always looking on the daily sources to find the, the most recent breaches, then, then figuring out what is going on, what were the vulnerabilities, and then understanding everything. Because the really, you just want to be... You want to be looking to understand as much as you possibly can. Some people refer to it as um, when you start working on the blue team, you're drinking through a fire hose, and you have to really enjoy that because there's going to be so much that's coming at you, and you need to also be able to admit that you don't know something, but it, that's the first step. The second step is actually going back, taking note of that, possibly in a meeting, and then looking that up because this is how you build, and over the years, this will, this will really compile on top of each other, and you'll have a very strong understanding of security and be able to benefit your organization. Now you need to, along with these communication skills, you need to have strong technical skills. And these can be built up through many years of working in the field through certifications. And I'm going to actually get into these resources later on in this presentation. Um, so another very important thing is persistence. Because they say that the attacker only has to get, the attacker only has to get right one time and the defensive side has to be on their game all of the time. So you have to constantly, and this is also referring to threat hunts, so you have to be very persistent. You have to, because there can be sometimes you can be looking at logs, you can be looking at alerts, and you're not finding anything, but you have to keep diving in there because the attacker only has to be right one time. They only have to do the right move, and you have to be constantly uh, checking these moves and keeping, keeping your organization secure. And then critical thinking. Critical thinking is extremely important because you need to be able to think outside the box to, as these adversaries are getting better and better, uh, it's very important to be able to uh, counter their moves and understand where they're going. Now I'm going to be talking a little bit about some blue team tasks. So some of the daily tasks involved with the blue team. Um, and one of the common roles, I'm sure you, um, if you haven't been uh, introduced to this term yet, it's called a SOC analyst, but uh, if you have been, it, that's one of the most uh, common blue team roles that you'll be hearing about and one of the most entry-level roles that you'll be looking to get into. And depending on, uh, so these SOC analysts, they in investigate alerts. So the higher level SOC analysts perform digital forensics. They're threat hunting teams depending on your organization and the, the maturity of the blue team within your organization. They correspond with the threat intelligence teams, they get in threat intelligence feeds, and use this information to tune their alerts. They also, like I said before, they, they create and update rules to constantly adapt as the, threats are, as the threats are coming in. So keeping up with malicious actors involves a lot of research, uh, CVE research, which is the con common vulnerabilities and exposures, so you have to constantly be keeping up on this information to 
tune your rules and and then threat hunting threat hunting I'm gonna be doing a video later on this in my series but it's a very interesting uh, process where your your blue team basically looks inside your organization um, and finds adversaries and finds um, vulner I mean finds vulnerabilities that are being exploited by adversaries and depending on how how tuned your systems are like your sim which is the security information and event management um, your day could involve a lot of investigating false positives so this is where I get back to the persistence uh, in the skill set that I had mentioned before because you have to while you may be getting a little bit fatigued from these alerts you have to still be you have to still treat them like real events because in the in the event that your organization is compromised you do not want to overlook anything now here's just an example of a tool that a blue team analyst will be looking at this is called Splunk I actually had I actually used this in my internship over the summer and became pretty familiar with it this is a very uh, high level dashboard that something that managers will be looking at um, if you're a SOC analyst you'll be looking at more um, traffic logs as they come in rather than this uh, very general um, security posture dashboard that is presented right here and now something that is very important and um, very useful for developing I'm going to be getting into some of the tools that you'll be used and tools and resources that you'll be using so um, some of the resources that you used to develop because like I said before you had to constantly always be learning looking for more and in, in this like because we are in the field of technology it is great that there's so many content creators out there so many so many resources out there that are putting out their information to help the next generation of cybersecurity professionals. So, Cybrary, if you haven't heard of Cybrary before, they have a tremendous amount of classes, great quality classes on virtually uh, on most of the cybersecurity topics that you're interested in. So, I would highly recommend going over to Cybrary, check this out. I'm going to put the link in the description. Uh, I'm in no, by no means sponsored by Cybrary, but I, I feel like it is my duty to. Um, you know, present them because I have I have gone through so many cyber classes and I'm really appreciative of their service. Certifications, I've already talked about the Security Plus certification. If you're interested in that certification, please go check out my previous videos. And I'm going to be doing more certification videos in the future and in this series. I'm going to be basically um, telling you the the order of certifications to go for if you're if, depending on the certain roles you're looking for. And then YouTube videos on specific tools. Um, this could be videos, and and don't get confused when I'm I'm just throwing out some terms because I will be addressing these all in later in the series, and this will be a series that will be in a playlist, so it'll all make sense when it's all together. Um, but some some YouTube videos on cybersecurity tools such as Snort, Suricata, and even Security Onion, and I'm going to be talking about them later, of course. And then podcasts. I have a Black Hills Information Security. Uh, image in this slide because I really enjoy their podcast. I, I, on, I consume about uh, three to four hours of podcasts every single day and I, I attribute this to uh, a lot of the cybersecurity knowledge I have right now because it, it's really, it's an interesting discussion between cybersecurity professionals and they really, they give you very valuable insights into what it's like working in the field, the things that they experience and honestly, and, and that you're learning from their lessons. And then Something very important is helpful books. So I linked three books in the description. Um, they're very, I, these are some of the, the top picks that I would recommend. Um, Practical Packet Analysis is a great one. And actually, um, the author of that one has been in a lot of podcasts that I listen to. And I can link them in the description too. It, it's really, it's a great book. Uh, the Blue Team Field Manual is a great book as well. And the Tau... Uh, the Tower of Network Security Monitoring be Behind Intrusion Detection. These are all great books to provide you a foundation and then get into the more intermediate levels of cybersecurity and progress. You will definitely take all of these, you definitely take all of this knowledge into the workplace and it's setting yourself up to be a better employee, to be more effective and protect your organization.